everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another thrilling, exciting, amazing edition of the Melrose Scoop. I'm back here with friend of the show, Kate Lipper Garabedian. Hi, hey, how are you? Thanks for uh, joining us. Happy to be here and awesome. excited to do this again with you. Very cool. Yeah. Well, we are literally on the campaign trail. <laughs> That's true. I'm out door knocking today. I took a half day. We're in the final you know, weeks here, so I want to try to reach as many people as I can. Cool, cool. So you're running for a re-election. Right. Uh, I should say counselor at large That's now. That's right. Um, what inspired, why, why are you doing this crazy thing again? Well, I really enjoyed the first term. Um, I've learned a lot from my colleagues and working with uh, the city. And it's really been a real honor to represent the city of Melrose. What I like about this role is that it can both allow me to help out on constituent services one-on-one -on -one with people who have needs like a new sidewalk um, repair or putting in a street sign. And then also thinking about bigger picture issues like vacancies in our commercial storefronts or ways that our city can be more sustainable. So it's a nice combination of sort of the one-on-one -on -one work that I did as a teacher in the classroom and then the bigger picture work that I do as an attorney at the state level. So I think I'm um, pretty effective at both and I'd like to keep really supporting the city and moving forward and helping um, the residents have real faith and trust in their local government. That's great, that's great. So you're obviously out and about, you're going to a lot of events, you're doing a lot of door knocking, sure. meeting a lot of people. For this election, what are you seeing? I know there are a lot of issues. What right. are you seeing as like one that really kind of sticks out and what's your plan to deal with? Right. I mean, I think you could divide issues into sort of substantive areas and then procedural, um, and both are really important. Um, on substantive, I'm still hearing a lot about, you know, road infrastructure and street safety, as well as our public safety buildings hearing about you know, supporting our schools and ensuring that the city council is carefully reviewing budget requests. But you know, on a procedural side, and I think this is really important because it cuts across all those different areas, is just an idea that people are yearning for more information and more actionable and proactive timing and when they're getting that information. So for example, we could improve the ticketing system when people ask for a sidewalk repair, they note a pothole. It goes into sort of a system which is great, but then they don't really have a lot of information coming back to them about when it's going to be scheduled to be addressed. We could do better with that. Or if we have vacancies on boards and commissions that make a lot of big decisions for our city, like the um, Zoning Board of Appeals or the Planning Board, um, I'd like the mayor to be more um, open about noticing that to the public so people can step forward. In fact, just today, I was walking around um, near Shaw's and I met a new resident who moved in from Brookline area. He was a trustee at the Brookline Library and he'd love to be supporting our library here, but he doesn't really know how to get involved. Um, this is low-hanging fruit to get more civic participation and I really look forward to doing that in the next term. Of course, I also have my newsletter. It goes out to 1,200 people right now. You're welcome to sign up for that anytime. Just reach out to me. Okay, great. And then yeah. what is it about your experience um, at, on the Board of Aldermen uh, that you see is really going to help you facilitate this? Sure. I mean, having been on the board for a year and a half, I now have a better sense of how the city works and who to go to if we have particular issues or concerns. Um, I have a nice rapport, I think, with you know the department heads. Um, and certainly it helps that we've gone through two budget cycles now with me being on the city council, including this last one, I was chairing the appropriations committee. That's a chance to get a better sense of how each department is working independently and also interconnectedly with other departments. So just having some time to really be part of the system and understand it better and then also represent um, residents who are kind of pushing in and trying to get more information has been really useful as being a conduit between those two groups. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And how can people get involved with your effort and your campaign? Sure. So of course we all know it's going to be a really unprecedented amount of change on November 5th. We're going to have the opportunity to elect a mayor. There'll be set at least seven new councilors on the city council of 11 of us. So the most important thing I would say is just please consider voting for me for one of your four city councilors at large. Um, additionally, the last two Saturdays of the election cycle, I'll be holding signs downtown. You're welcome to come and join us. Um, I'm not doing yard signs this year. I'm the one city council at large who hasn't bucked the trend yet of historically not doing that. So if you prefer, though, I do have digital yard signs. You're welcome to put one up on your social media pages just to let people know you're supporting me and planning to vote for me. And that would be great, too. So okay. thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks, Kate. Thank really appreciate both. it. Yeah, it's great to see you. you have bet. a great weekend, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time. Take Bye. care. Bye.